Um, yeah, hands do not touch your precious me. It's in fact a collaboration with uh, Olivier de Sagazan, the visual artist from France who made, works with transformation with clay. He came to me, I was busy with the performance, and then we said, yeah, he, he, he this, did since very long time his solo performances where in fact he said, yeah, I was a painter and I wanted to get in the painting and he made these <coughs> transformations. Um, not to forget that uh, Olivier was born in, in Congo and uh, that you feel, still feel the influence in his uh, white French uh, artist and he often goes back for, for to see, to study and to do. And then we also felt that it would be interesting to mix universes and uh, I wanted to, I felt that Charo Calvo, who was a dancer with us from the beginning, but who is composing uh, electroacoustic music and did lots of film design and worked for a lot of stages, uh, stage works, that she should bring this sound for there. And then we call it like it's a mixed universe of, of us three. And of course, yeah, there are uh, dancers. At the end, I am myself on the scene again. Lieve Meusen, who was a dancer with us from the beginning, who is a costume designer. She came back and she plays, in fact, the main role. It's a subject that, uh, that Charo Calvo brought. It's about Inanna, the uh, Mesopotamian goddess of 4,500 years ago, when it was still matriarchat, and where the, the women, the goddess of the women, had the power because the men were just transporting the materials and because the... It's a, it's a funny anecdote that because the markets were further away, they, they could have the material longer time and that's how it became little by little patriarchat. And so it's interesting because we, I started to read about that and, and it's a, an incredible script in fact that Inanna was the goddess of the contradictions of the... Of the the good and the bad, of the dark and the light, of the and, and uh, the destruction to create, and something that's very close to me. And she had a sister, Eresh Kigal, who went to the underworld. So I thought it's perfect for Olivier that he plays the sister of Inanna, who starts there, goes to the underworld, transforms himself, becomes non-gender, he loses his female thing. Uh, and Levi stays there, and the Mies, because in the title it's, it's a script from one of the tablets that he find. It's one of the first writings in humanity. Hands do not touch your precious me. The Mies are in fact the cultural values they had. They had a tablet of the art of weaving baskets, the art of writing, the art of the warrior, the art of, 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 of the bad dreams, and really subjects that interest me. So I, I had the idea to work with the dancers that they are the Mies. Mm -hmm. And then there is the god Enki and it's all very... Uh, who has all this me and Inanna gets them. A little by little, in fact, Olivier uh, as Eresh Kigal brings all these Mies to the underworld and at the end uh, Inanna to, set, to, 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 to rejoin with her sister, she has also to to go there where he transforms again into a very ugly woman, let's say, with all these transformations and they join. So it's a dark show, but it's a show where there are also visuals in, because Enki becomes an observer, like normally in the anecdotes she makes him drunk or something, we had like, yeah, that, that's not good, me drunk on the scene. So. So I sell my niece for a camera and I become a kind of observer where I observe the story through image. Very simple. So you are on stage, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yes, at the end I'm on stage. I like to be. And scattered memories will be also on stage? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> because the scattered memory, yeah, we last year had an interview and, and um, the journalist said, yeah, congratulations with your 35 year existence of Utma, as I said, 35 years. He said, yeah, you found it in Utma West in 86. I was, no, it was 87. Ah, then it's next year. Mm -hmm. So it's this year. And then, yeah, we had no idea to do something, but then we felt like maybe we should celebrate it. Mm -hmm. And then came the idea to, to bring back all the dancers, but it was too many. <laughs> yeah. So at the end, we will be making a show in short time. I started last week. 
12 days rehearsal by person, but as I know the person is very good, it's all lined out and it will be 23 people on the scene where we have memories of it, we, we do scenes as a memory, we reverse things, we change musics. I will start with, yeah, because I am the beginning, let's say, so, but a, a very interesting thing that I read is that Hannah Arendt said it's impossible to tell your own story. You have to tell your story by people who are very close to you. Mm -hmm. And that helped me that I said, okay, I'm going to tell my story with the people I loved and who gave so much to, to my list. Said is back, the blind uh, dancer, uh, lots of people. Of course, there are some missing because it's difficult to organize. They're also busy. They're very good artists, I must say. And yeah, also music-wise, it will be more a memory. There will be films in, elements of films. So we try to re-see things in another way. Sorry? He will be present, but not. Uh, we will we will use his music quite uh, yeah some, but we will also musics that interest me that uh, are nothing to do with that I worked with. Mm -hmm. I, I I feel it's it's an opportunity a show to to make like this that you're not four months busy and say it has to be perfect and this 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 thing where even some things will be that we have. Today, this couple does it, and tomorrow, other couple does it because we have too many on the scene. Yeah. But it will be uh, interesting for me also at the end. Uh, I just uh, came to my mind you will be maybe, you don't know it by, by now, but you will be a third time on stage in the end, or in Volkstheater. We are presenting a book, Ismail Ivo, gemacht von Johannes Rodenthal. And you are so kind also, as we couldn't do it through the memorial last year where Tata was dancing because of COVID. You had COVID at yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you will do now, I think, with three dancers uh, in this book presentation a small present for Ismail as well. And that's really touching for me as well. Also, the other part of the artistic program will be Dudu Tucci. Maybe the older one of you remember, he was the percussionist of Ismail for the first years. It was wonderful. Yeah, I just want to add, because it, it, it's funny, because uh, Arno, our Belgian singer, who made also music for me, he also passed away. And so, yeah, I saw him three weeks before I saw his last concert. He kept on the stage like this, so it, I will make it with two memories in the same time, in fact. Uh, mm -hmm. Two beautiful people that we, yeah, that we will miss, but who will always yeah. stay present. But they stay in our heart. Dada, uh, you start on Saturday your big German tour, and as I already mentioned before, uh, you had the chance for the first time to show the sacrifice in Johannesburg, yeah. which is, uh, and I think you liked it a lot because all your family finally was there. Uh, you're doing it again on the 29th, 31st of July, at least, in the Wiener Burgtheater. I know you like Volkstheater very much, but we put you now in, in this space. Uh, how is it going in general? Because last year uh, was a difficult time yeah. because of your ankle, mm -hmm. and but still you danced for Ismail in this memorial. But this year, I think you will be back on stage. And yes. Yes, I'm very excited so about that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's been a very long journey and because of COVID, um, it feels as if I've made four works in like a year and a half um, because we would start and then lockdown would start and then we had to stop for a couple of months. Um, so it's been a quite frustrating journey, but I... Um, the sacrifice is inspired by the Rite of Spring, um, and so when I was studying at Parts, uh, 2004, 2006, um, we had uh, Dominique Dushinsky, who actually worked um, with Pina Bausch, and she came when we were doing rape to teach us just a little bit of spring, and I was very intrigued um, by the music, I mean, Stravinsky's music just blew my mind, um, and also just Pina Bausch is my favorite choreographer, so because of the dance drama in her work, I really related to that. Uh, and so with the sacrifice, what I wanted to do is explore the whole idea of ritual. Um, in South Africa, we have 11 official languages, 
And in the company, we have people that speak Xhosa, that speak Zulu, that speak Tswana, English, Afrikaans, you know, so it's like a medley um, of everything. So I wanted to be able to fuse all these rituals and cultures and traditions together. Um, yeah, which was uh, tricky, um, but uh, just also we got to know each other through that and we got to uh, be able to make it a work about acknowledging our ancestors. Um, I wanted to create a sacred work, a work where we're saying thank you. It is a work that I wanted to dedicate to my grandmother uh, who passed in 2015 and I was on tour at the time so I was given a choice okay you can go to the funeral or you can carry on touring we're doing Swan Gate then so then I said you know she was my biggest supporter so she would have liked for me to to perform and I was saying yesterday in the interview that black funerals are dramatic you know, so I didn't want the drama of watching people try to throw themselves in the grave. I mean, it, it becomes a whole show. Um, so I thought, okay, just do Swan Lake. And um, it was crazy because um, I've got a six minute solo that I do. And um, there was this cockroach on the stage. So it was separating me from Siegfried. So I had to work around the cockroach and he said to me after the show, that was your grandmother telling you that I am here. You know, so yeah, the work was about just celebrating her life um, and also other people's um, journeys uh, because a lot of people lost people and I, I was also saying yesterday that in the beginning I wanted to make a dark work. You know, I wanted to talk about the inhumanity of the world and the corruption and, you know, the poor people getting poorer, rich people getting richer. So I've just been finding the world a very harsh place. But I think with COVID happening, everything changed because then it, it became a work about uplifting each other, supporting each other, taking care of each other. Um, so yeah, it's been a, an interesting journey. So um, the sacrifice is a fusion of contemporary dance and uh, Tswana dance. So I'm Tswana, and since I started choreographing, um, I had never fused with Tswana dance. So I had to learn Tswana dance. It took me about three months, uh, just with me and the teacher first. Um, and then when we started rehearsing, then the company had to learn it as well. It's a very intricate, intricate, very elegant um, a dance technique. Um, it's all about you know the claps and the rituals and um, everything. And I yeah I really like it uh, because my mother said yeah you've done flamenco, you've done ballet, you've done African dance. When are you going to do um, your own? Uh, so yeah, I mean it's very close to my heart. It's not just about fusing different dance techniques. It's also just about acknowledging my heritage. So yeah.